Does your fire department respond into rural areas that require a tanker shuttle? Do you utilize portable frame tanks at the fire scene for the storage of that water? In this video today, we're going to discuss an efficient way to set up those portable tanks and a means of transferring water from one, two, and three or more ponds to get that water to the primary attack engine that is doing the drafting at the fire scene. The rumble! <laughs> Storage of water on the fire scene buys time, gives us a safety net, and builds a cushion of extra water if the demand is needed at the fire scene. It also is a place to store that water when the tankers are emptied and are off to the fill site to be refilled to shuttle water back to the fire scene. If tankers are stacked up or waiting to offload, this becomes inefficient. We wanna be able to offload that water as quickly but safely as possible so those tankers can then go back to the fill location to be refilled, shuttling that water back to the fire scene. One critical component of this evolution is that we need to have a dump site pumper. And what that means is that pumper is dedicated to pumping water out of the frame tanks to supply the fire ground operations. Sometimes this may be the direct fire pumper at the scene fighting the fire, but it is preferred that a secondary pumper is put into this position to dedicate their operation to sourcing water from the folding tank or the, uh, the portable pond and supply that to the attack pumper on the fire scene. Once the first tank is dropped on the ground, the dump site pumper will assemble the appropriate equipment to draft out of that pond. This will consist of suction hose and low level strainers. Before the tanker offloads its water into that first tank, the dump site pumper must be ready to draft that water and be prepared to supply that water to the fire scene. As additional tankers and resources arrive at the fire scene, best practice is to offload additional equipment, additional strainers, additional sections of suction hose, as well as additional frame tanks that can be now stacked up along the roadway to allow more water to be dumped at the fire scene for processing and used for fighting the fire. Once that first tank is up and running, now we can supply the fire scene utilizing the water in the tank. To add additional storage to the fire scene, a secondary tank will be put down adjacent to the first tank and some form of transfer devices need to be put in the second tank, transferring water into the first tank. That way there will be no interruption of the delivery of water from the ponds that are on the fire grounds. One very efficient way of transferring water from one frame tank to another frame tank is by using a jet siphon strainer. Basically what this is, is a device that has a mode of jet that takes pressurized water through the jet, forcing it up through the hard tube, creating a Venturi effect, and ultimately transferring that water with Venturi physics from one tank to the other. It should be noted, when setting up these suction tubes and low level strainers for transferring of the water, to calculate as an average, between 500 and 600 gallons a minute as your transfer rate. If the demand requires we transfer greater than that five to 600 gallons per minute from one tank to the other, best practice is to assemble a second suction tube with a second low level strainer to transfer double the flow from the second tank into the first tank. The hose lines that feed these jets should be attached to a manifold or an outlet on the pumper that can be controlled by the driver operator of that piece or even a secondary firefighter. In the event a third tank is now placed on the ground to accommodate more storage of water on the fire scene, the same application will apply. Only in this case, we would like to take water from the third tank, transfer it over the second tank into the primary drafting tank. The reason we do that is we don't want to waste time and energy pumping the water from the third tank to the second tank and then from the second tank back to the first tank. By bridging the gap over the second tank, all the water, regardless of if it is in the second tank or the third tank, finds its way more efficiently into the primary draft tank. And it's also recommended to have a manifold or a series of gated wires or water thieves that an individual operator 
can transfer that water using the valves depending on which jet siphon they decide to operate with. Off of this initially when we do this, there's gonna be a little manifold or a gated Y at the driver operator's position. Immediately we need to get inch and three quarter hose lines to these jets to act as the motive. Um, even though our driver operator is drafting and supplying water to the fire ground, we can have a, a secondary firefighter that his role is just to move those jets or continually have conversation. There's other options. Uh, sometimes people will take a stretch of three inch or two and a half out to here and put that manifold on the ground if you want to do that way. Either way, and then that transfer person can visualize what's going on. Now I have a TFT water thief with a gated Y. So on one two and a half inch outlet at the driver's position, we will be able to run all four of those lines. A good mindset is that a moving tanker is a productive tanker. Tanker trucks that are parked waiting to offload or that are stacked up at the fill site are not efficient. We want to have a very smooth rotation of these tank trucks coming into the fire scene, offloading their water, moving away from the fire scene, returning back to the fill site, and keeping that cycle in a smooth rotation. Any delay in this will hinder your operations and slow down the delivery of water on the fire scene. When we attach any of these sections of suction hose to the frame tank, or even while it's laying in this ladder bridge, Good practice is to secure these down with webbing that's typically carried in a firefighter's pocket, some pieces of rope or lashing straps. This will prevent the hose line from moving out of its position and coming off the side of the tank. Another important factor that we must keep in mind is, is to try to avoid dumping that water directly onto the strainers that are attached to the dump site pumper. This aeration of water dumping onto that strainer could cause some issues with air getting into the drafting line, possibly losing flow and efficiency on the draft pumper. Another important thing to keep in mind is if your tankers are shuttling on a single lane roadway, as shown here, one side of the roadway needs to remain clear. So all of the inch and three quarter lines that are attached to your manifold and hooked into these jet siphons should all be laid off on the opposite side out of the roadway in a safe manner where firefighters won't trip over them, but more importantly, they won't be struck by the vehicle traffic coming into your dump site. An important thing to remember is that the primary dump site engine has a given size pump, be it 1,000, 1,500, 1,750. That pump size comes into play when we're operating these jet siphons. Each jet siphon, on average, will consume 150 to 200 gallons per minute of the mode of flow. That flow is now being taken away from the pump's total capacity. That is why it's critically important when we get to these higher flows to do at a minimum two suction tubes off of the dump site pumper. This allows us not only to process water for the firefighting operation, but it also provides us more capacity when we want to feed those jet siphons. In the situation that we built out here today, those four jet siphons are consuming upwards of maybe 800 gallons per minute of fire flow, stealing that away from the actual dump site pumpers operations for the fire ground. Another technique to make your dump site operations more efficient and to make the transferring of water more efficient is to have a secondary pumper if available and if enough space is there to have that pumper set up and draft out of the primary tank. The duties now of transferring water are moved to a discharge of that secondary pumper allowing the first pumper at the dump site to have maximum pump capacity for fire ground operations. This is another task that is now taken from the dump site pumpers driver operator that he doesn't have to be concerned about and that secondary pumper will take care of that role making that site even more efficient. Whether in the rural environment or in a municipality that has issues with their water system, the challenge to you is to get out with your members and your mutual aid partners to train on these practices to the most efficient that you can be for the rural water supply fire ground. Thank you for watching.